This is TEDx Bath. This is TEDx Bath Countdown. This is TEDx Bath Countdown. We're here to discuss climate change. To take action. To tackle the climate emergency. This is TEDx Bath Countdown. Well, hopefully I'm not going to be around if we get a temperature rise of one and a half degrees. But if we do, we will go past a tipping point where global warming will get completely out of control. And so it's my kids and their kids that are really going to suffer. Business can provide um, leadership in very specific areas. You know, I think the whole of the architecture, engineering and construction professionals need to get together and, and provide uh, um, a new generation of buildings that actually addresses the climate emergency. Um, I think we're seeing huge uh, advances in the energy, produc energy production industries. You know, 45 years ago when I started in this business, no one had heard of a photovoltaic cell. Uh, and when they first emerged, they cost hundreds of dollars. They now cost a few cents. So. The, there's been enormous uh, successes in some areas. Um, electric cars have seem to have gone have come into our lives very very rapidly. So you can see technology is there to help us, um, but actually what the, what is more important is that actually we have a change in our approach in in, a, in, in our overall philosophy. I guess when I was a student, I became very interested in uh, low energy design, not because of climate change, because climate change wasn't recognized then, but because we felt that we were going to run out of fossil fuels and that that was going to be a dramatic change in our lifestyle. And it was only 15 years into my career that people recognized that fossil fuels were the real problem and that actually they were having a serious impact. On, on the climate and um, naturally that my interest in reducing energy in buildings kind of morphed into a, 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 an idea that we should actually uh, reduce carbon emissions from buildings. It's only in the last five or ten years that we've come to look at buildings as uh, from a point of view of the embodied energy within them, as well as the operational energy that they use. Um, so about sort of 20 or 30 percent of the energy that we use in this country is, uh, is used in keeping our buildings heated and lighted and lit and ventilated. Um, and a further 10 percent and growing is what goes into constructing the buildings and renovating and maintaining the buildings. So it's the material aspects of the buildings that are of concern to us. Um, and that's an interesting um, revelation. It sounds as so though we ought to have recognised that previously, but the focus, focus for most of my lifetime has been on operational energy, not on embodied energy. Um, so the, the, for the next generation, I think, of architects, building using less energy to build with is important. It's going to be more important. Net zero is, is an a, a extraordinary goal to try to achieve in architectural terms because all buildings use energy and making buildings use this energy. But we have to not only um, achieve net zero in new buildings, the most important thing is we've got to convert our existing building stock to net zero carbon buildings. And it's a hell of a challenge. So low energy design from an architectural perspective means two things. It means looking at the energy content, the carbon content of the materials that we use to make our buildings. And it means you looking at the energy that we use on a day-to-day -day basis to keep those buildings comfortable. And the carbon content of the buildings is a really important issue for us because we're actually getting a bit better at using less energy to, to create comfortable conditions in buildings. And over the years, over the last few years in the UK, actually the energy that we're, the electrical energy that we're using in our buildings 
is actually, it's a bit because of the wind power and the solar energy that we're using, it's a bit less carbon intensive. So that means that we have to look more closely at how we're making our buildings. And the concrete and the steel that we put into those buildings is incredibly carbon intensive. So we have to design those with a minimum amount of concrete and steel and we have to look at low energy materials generally to produce the next generation of architecture. The next big change that we're all looking for is how do we wean ourselves off high carbon concrete in buildings. If you look at a typical building, about quarter, a quarter of the carbon that's embodied in that building is in the concrete, in the foundations, in the framing, etc. Um, it's the real, it's the heavyweight materials that we build our buildings with, bricks, concrete blocks, concrete that actually contain the most carbon. And if we could find a low carbon source of cement, uh, that would be a real winner. Uh, people have been looking for some time and I'm not quite sure how we're going to deal with it. But um, the, the other option that we have, of course, is to use um, biocomposite materials or use materials that are grown. We need to grow our buildings. In other words, we use tim more timber, more bamboo, more hemp, more materials that actually we can harvest because they are sequestering carbon. They are used, soaking up carbon in order to grow those materials. So a building made out of timber is hugely less significant from a carbon emissions perspective than a building made from concrete. It's very interesting to see the way farming has changed over my life, lifetime completely and the way we have ripped out hedgerows, we have destroyed areas of natural beauty, we have constantly driven towards a kind of monoculture in our agricultural approach. And we're, we're now rapidly understanding, I think, that what we, what we have lost, and we're beginning to reformulate the way we, we, we're redesigning, in a sense, the countryside around us. Um, I'm involved in a farming community where we're putting in 1,200 miles of hedgerows. You know, it's an extraordinary increase in, in the biodiversity that will come as a result of that. Um, and, and I think we, we just need to look after the natural world in, in the UK, but also think about how we are so totally dependent still on monoculture from elsewhere in the world and recognise that we have to think about how that impacts on our diet and how, what impact we're having on the globe itself. It's interesting that people during the COVID crisis have said that one, one of the things that has meant most to them is their reconnecting with nature and their longing for the outside world and the natural world. And I think a sustainable future, a transform, transformed future for us, uh, will have a lot more of our connection with the natural world. What we can all do to help face the climate and biodiversity challenges that we're faced with at the moment is, is look at ways in which we can reduce our footprint, our carbon footprint. And the critical areas of our individual carbon footprint in this country are transportation, it's about 30% of our footprint, uh, heating and lighting our buildings and building new buildings, that's about 40% of, of, of our carbon footprint. And the other really big one is food. And so if, if we can go to a move towards a, a less carbon intensive diet, means being much more aware of what is being grown seasonally. It means um, making do with much less meat. If we can look at, uh, in terms of transport, at walking and cycling and using public transport rather than getting back into our cars and our aeroplanes. And if we can look at insulating our homes much, much better and moving towards a low carbon building stock, uh, that will go a long way towards reducing the carbon footprint in the UK. 
And finally, I guess, just thinking about making do with less stuff. Because what we've done over the last, over my lifetime, is taken our carbon footprint offshore, away. We are, if you look at the graphs of, of, of carbon emissions in this country, it does look as though we're, they're going down quite a bit. But if you look at what, what's happening, we have exported our carbon emissions to China and to other parts of the world who are expending carbon and producing stuff that we are consuming. And we need to just do, make do with less.